The base Mac Studio is basically my MacBook Pro as a desktop. Let's check it out. Hi, this is Dave with Tech for Baba, a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing to the channel. In today's video, let's unbox the new Mac Studio. A new line of desktop Macs slotted right in the middle of Mac Mini and the Mac Pro. It comes in a surprisingly large box. Cute cloth handle, no more plastic wrap, just a paper tab to tear open the box. Satisfying as usual though. Interesting packaging. Opening Apple's package is always an experience in itself. There it is, the Mac Studio. Small, but heavier than I thought. It comes with a black power cord. Not rubbery, but covered with a cloth mesh. Feels good, pretty high quality. There are the usual quick user's guide and docs and a black Apple sticker instead indicating this is a pro machine. Very nice. Let's look at this little desktop in more detail. Apple wraps their product in paper these days. The entire case is aluminum, all silver with a big black Apple logo on the top. It's 7.7 .7 inches by 7.7 .7 inches and 3.7 inches tall. Basically, it's like two and a half Mac Minis stacked together. It does weight quite a bit at 5.9 pounds. The one I have here is the version with the M1 Max inside. The M1 Ultra version weighs two pounds heavier due to the copper heat sink for better cooling. That's heavy compared to my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is less than five pounds. The weight is not as big of a deal for the Mac Studio, of course, since it's a desktop computer most likely to just sit on my desk. Even though it's so compact, I can easily pack it in a bag and take it with me if I really want to. There's a ring of holes on the bottom for air intake. And on the back, a big array of holes for the fan to push hot air out. And look at all these ports on the back. Starting from the left, there are four Thunderbolt 4 ports. We only get three of them with the MacBook Pro. A 10 gigabit Ethernet port. No Ethernet on the MacBook Pro. Not even a 1 gigabit one. A power connector. Two USB-A ports. Also not on the MacBook Pro. A HDMI port. A headphone jack. And a power button. And there are more. In the front, there are two USB-C ports, which become Thunderbolt 4 ports on the M1 Ultra configuration, and a SD card slot. It's great these ports are in the front, so much easier to get to. Lastly, there's a power indicator on the right. Here I have it set up on the desk with my 32-inch LG display. I didn't get the new 27-inch Apple display since I already have this bigger LG display, which has been working well for me. I also love this awesome monitor arm it came with. I also did not get the new keyboard nor the trackpad. I've been using Logitech MX keys and Master 3 mouse, which I also use for my desktop PC on the right. Speaking of the desktop PC to the right, this is my very small PC, or as far as desktop PC is concerned, with NVIDIA 3080 Ti inside. Here is the Mac Studio in front of it. Mac Studio is so much smaller. What's even more amazing is Mac Studio runs so much more efficiently and quietly. I can hardly hear its fans most of the time. By the way, this keyboard and mouse combo is great for a desk with multiple computers. I've shared my thoughts on the MX Master mouse, which I'll link in the description below if you want to check it out. The Mac Studio I have here is the base configuration with the M1 Max chip, 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, and 16 core neural engine with 32 gigabytes of unified memory and 512 gigabytes of storage for 1999 US dollars. It's basically my 16-inch MacBook Pro turned into a desktop. 
A 16-inch MacBook Pro in the same config would cost $1,100 more. Of course, you still need to buy a keyboard, a mouse, and a monitor. But that's still a good deal if you don't need the portability of a laptop. And there's that almost twice as fast M1 Ultra chip option. But it also costs twice as much and more. Since this Mac Studio and my 16-inch MacBook Pro have the same config, and my day-to-day -day workloads, photo and video editing, don't come close to pushing the performance limit on these amazing machines, I haven't seen a performance difference between the two. The Mac Studio does have much better thermal headrooms, being a desktop with bigger heat sinks and fans. I'm sure it'll perform faster, longer, if I eventually have workloads that can push these machines to the limit. But for now, they work the same for me. Again, I think for those who do not need the portability of a laptop, Mac Studio is a better choice. It's cheaper and performs the same or even better. I would miss the nice XDR display on the MacBook Pro though, unless I have enough money for Apple's beautiful 32 inch Pro Display XDR. Thanks for watching. If you find any part of this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Are you also considering the Mac Studio? I'd love to know what Macs you've been using in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember to cherish each moment.